Hi and welcome to Rhinoceros and Grasshopper Tutorials, Complex 3D Modeling with your host, Saki Baziz. So this next tutorial that I'm going to prepare for you is going to be called the Beginner's Guide. And the aim is to actually show you uh, what to do in Rhino if it's the first time that you actually opened it. So if, the, if it's the first time that you opened Rhino, it might look a little bit overwhelming because you have all these different um, attributes and elements that you're not quite familiar with and um, I'm just going to walk you through. So the first thing we will look at is the basic interface. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to get a hold of all these different elements that are flying around here on your canvas and how to understand them and how to actually then get into the complex modeling because that's basically why you are watching this video, right? So the first thing that you want to do is basically open up your Rhino 6 or Rhino 5 version. Um, you first have to just install that and of course then just open it up. You can just download it from the McNeil website. And as you can see right now, I have um, a Rhino 6 evaluation uh, version. So it's gonna be uh, 10 days remaining. So I have to uh, actually buy it now. And if you, are, if you have done that and you've opened up Rhino, this is basically how it should look more or less. So this is the default setting of your Rhino interface. And if you are fairly new to Rhino, the first thing you want to do actually, if you need information or if you need any guidance to um, execute some commands or in general to understand the logic of uh, modeling in Rhino, you can always just press F1. So that's the first major tip. Just press F1, that should launch your browser. And um, I'm just gonna do it now for you as well so what that does basically it will take you to the mcneil.com rhino6 etc um, website where they have this amazing library with all the information you need um, regarding rhino commands and um, overall the interface how you can export how you can set up renders so everything that is built in rhino as a function you will find here and you will find the informations and this is exactly what I want to show you now. So let's assume it's the first time that you are in, um, using Rhino. Um, I want to take you to the quick tour. And then we go to the Rhino window in the browser. And here it is actually showing you and telling you exactly what those elements are that you are seeing in Rhino. But of course, I'm going to walk you through um, using this as a guiding um, set. So. Now let's go back to our file. I will just minimize that and just put it here for now. So basically coming back to Rhino, um, as you can see, there are four prominent windows open right now and we call them viewports. So you uh, basically have the top viewport, the perspective, the front and the right. And I will show you in a second what that actually means. But just to continue on, you have um, a lot of icons just spread it all over the place. And these are actually the Rhino commands that you can access, but we will talk about that just in a few minutes. Um, and then I just want to actually start from, let's say, the top and work ourselves down to the bottom of this interface. So if you opened up Rhino and you have actually saved your file, then you should be able to see that basically here. So if you have a saved file, um, you can just basically go to file and just save it or you could use this icon here you can just save um, the Rhino file and um, you can just say save as for instance and I have a of course a folder where I did this already but I can just do it again so let's say you are saving this and I will save it now again basically what will happen is always the name of your file will be a, will be appearing here and then in brackets, it will tell you how big your file is. So right now it's relatively small because I have no geometry drawn, right? But if you have a lot of geometry drawn, it will get bigger and bigger according to what you have. And then of course it will tell you which version you are working with right now. So for me, it's Rhino 6 evaluation. Uh, like I said, in 10 days, it's um, gonna be canceled. So I have to get a new one. And that's basically our first for first thing that we want to look at. So if I bring back my browser here and we look at our different elements, so my quick tour, and basically that's your window title. So what we just looked at is basically um, displayed here as uh, position number one. And the position number two is going to be our command history window. 
Now, what is a command history window? I can show that to you, of course. Um, basically, everything you type in into Rhino will be somehow uh, recorded, right? So every command that you do um, will iteratively just get recorded in this history panel here, as you can see it. It's um, basically, if you just click on it, you can actually scroll down and up. You can also use these little arrows on the side to your right. You can just scroll down and it's just giving you an information about what you have done already and um, what kind of logic you use to execute some commands. And this, you can even use that to debug maybe some of your um, uh, commands. So if you said something wrong, you did something wrong, you could check back in the history and just look, okay, where did I go wrong basically. What you can also do, you can just go into this window here and just press with your right mouse button and this will open up another window and uh, you can basically clear it. Um, you can just, you know, um, say delete everything that I have in my history. You could actually copy it. You can um, just go here and copy everything and just save it into any text file that you want to. And you can just access everything that I've been doing here. And this is just a recording of my history. So everything that I've done previously will be recorded here unless I just clear it. And then the history is gone, but my recording is still here. So just keep that in mind. And I just cleared my history using this clear function. And now everything is not displayed anymore. Okay, so this is basically our, um, our window prompt. So our command history window. And beneath that, it's going to be our command prompt. So this is the most uh, used, basically, window that you will have. It is basically the way that you communicate with Rhino the most efficient way, I would say, is by literally going into this command um, prompter and just typing in whatever you want. So for instance, if I would want to generate a box, then I would write down box in this prompt and it has an autocomplete function. So I can just literally just type in a B and um, it will give me all the options that I have in, uh, that are in the cluster of the letter B. So every command that starts with a B or every function that starts with a B will now be appearing in my, um, in my drop down menu here. And I can just with my arrows here, just scroll down to them. So I can just use and just navigate basically, or I can just use my mouse, which is a little bit more efficient. And I could act, start activating the command box, right? And since we're doing that already, um, I would just invite you to follow along. So I just press box and what's going to be the just a normal box that we're going to draw and of course i know that you are um, totally new so just maybe follow me along um, for this time and it wants to ask us so right now we are already in the command so we activated this little box uh, function and we have to now execute and follow along this the steps to uh, actually generate the box and the first thing that rhino wants to know is going to be the first corner of the base and for now let's just press zero and that will basically put my corner of the base at the origin point. And I'm going to, uh, of course, explain that, what that means. But now I have basically located one point that will serve me as a starting um, location. And now I want to draw further on. So the next thing he wants to know is going to be other corner or base or length. So I can just continue on um, just by pressing maybe three as our length for each side. So I press three, I enter, I press three, I enter, and I press three, I enter. And basically I have now generated a box, as you can see. And um, if I want to actually zoom into, I have to go into the perspective uh, viewport. But for now we can just leave it as it is and just go back to our overall understanding of what we are doing here. Okay, so now um, let's continue with our, with our tour and look at what we have seen already. So now we know what the command prompter is doing. And I, like I said, it's going to be very, very important for you because this is the main way to talk to Rhino basically, yeah? So now let's not talk about the icons here, but now let's look at the four main windows as you see here, which are annotated here with the five. And we can just go down and look at the five position and it's telling us viewports. 
and display the Rhino working environment, including object displays, viewport titles, background construction, plain grid, world access icon. Okay, that's a lot of information, but what is actually a viewport? So let's go back to our Rhino file and check it out. So like, I, like we already did, we generated a box, right? So we have drawn actually a three-dimensional uh, object now. And these viewports basically just give me different kind of perspectives and different kind of camera settings and positions that I can look at this object and then start to modulate it or start to model with it. So right now as a default, you always have the perspective mode, which is the main three-dimensional um, view. And you can just actually, if you're inside that view, you just have to go once to that um, box here, press one side inside once inside I mean and then you will see that this um, perspective is now a little bit annotated uh, or highlighted with a blue uh, color and now that means that you have activated this window and you can now scroll around and how do you scroll around you just press your right mouse button and hold it and then you can actually just hover through your scene basically you can with your scroller and your mouse just scroll you know, like basically just go away or go front using your um, movement. If you scroll backwards, it will go backwards. If you scroll in front, it will go in front. And then you can always pan by just pressing and holding your mouse, uh, right mouse button, right? And even though while you're uh, pressed, pressing and holding, you can also scroll. So that's something you can do also. So that's basically how we navigate to Rhino, more or less. And I want to show you quickly something that will make you understand what we are doing here. So let's assume I have this object now and I want to understand what these um, other viewports are actually showing me or which perspective they're showing me. And I can use that because like I said, everything that you're doing now, uh, all these perspectives are showing the same thing and are dynamic in that sense that everything that you do will also translate to the other viewports because that is the same object and it's the same scene. It's just a different kind of view that you have, right? So for instance, if I click on this um, box and I would activate basically something like, um, let's say move, I would just type in move. I then have to uh, do something to actually execute that and we will look at that quickly and briefly so let's assume that you are totally new to rhino and your settings down here in our uh, status bar which i will explain in one second is going to look like this so i would just say please right now just look at the status bar here everything should be um, not highlighted and just highlight this o snap here it's called o snap and then just go to end and in this box just check it so there's like this check uh, checked symbol and now if everything else is disabled only the O snap is uh, bold annotated and your um, end is checked now you can do the same command as I'm going to show you now so let's say we want to move it and we can also see that our end is now being catched. It's going to be snapped, basically, because we enabled the O-snap end, which means that at every corner, the object um, that we are looking uh, and we want to move now will snap to that corner through our mouse, basically. And now I'm just going to hover over one of the ends and just going to move it to another end. And as you can see, the top is related to my 3D model here. So in the top, I'm moving it along the green line here, as you can see. And that's what's happening in the scene as well. So for um, one more thing, maybe, we can just highlight and um, activate our author that will help us, basically. Uh, in the status bar, just um, highlight the author. And now we can actually just move in our dimensions here without being uh, so it's limited to our dimensions which makes it easier for this demonstration just that's what I wanted to do and as you can see I'm moving it in the green direction from the top so I'm, I'm looking at the object from the top and that's what I'm doing right so you can see that it's related in such a way 
and then of course we have the front and the right so let's look at that so in the front if I move it in the um, in the front it's going to go upwards yeah but if I move it into my top so if I go to top and I move this object along the green line you can see in the front nothing is happening right you still see the same object and um, it's the object itself is not moving and that's because you're looking at it from the front so you're looking at in that perspective here you're looking at it from here and of course because it's perfectly aligned to the axis you can't see the movement right so it's just like a, um, elevation or a section view of your object right now if you're from architecture from the field of architecture you know exactly what an elevation and section is and you can't see the object move because you're looking perfectly flat towards it towards this kind of, this side of this object okay so just giving you a basic head ups what this um, what these viewports are doing and I'm gonna break this video now and just make a pause and then we're gonna go to the next one um, so for now just having understood these elements is quite good and we will continue with part two of the introduction of the interface uh, in the next video so I hope this is, was enjoyable for you and I hope to see you in the next video and if you like this content please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel thank you very much